Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm sorry that we had to cut our video short. I was hearing that there were some technical issues. So I hope that you can all come back on and rejoin me on this video. Uh, I will give this a few seconds for you to find yourself. So sorry about the technical difficulty. That just happened. So we have Rick online, William McGee and Kim Kalaski bell join. Hi. Uh, we'll wait for a few more people, but basically today we're going to be talking about resources that you can use as a parent who is being erased from their kids' lives that are free or low cost and that are either available online or in your area. So the first thing that I was asking people is if they've ever heard of the organization Simply Parent. So I'll type in right here, simplyparent.org. And what Simply Parent does is that they help you start your own support group in your area. It's member run and the model that they use is similar to AA, meaning that members are able to run this group without any formal training. You don't need to be a therapist. Um, so I just wanted to let people know that this is an option for them. I do know that there is an active support group going on in the LA area and the Fort Collins, Colorado area. I'm not sure how many there are, but what they need is they need for people to support these support groups. How are people getting support um, in their own lives? Do you have, um, are you going to therapy? Are you talking with friends, a family member? And the reason why I'm bringing this up is within the past week, I've gotten a lot of emails and Facebook messages, more than normal, of people asking if they could just talk to me because they're being frustrated, if I could go to family court with them, um, what to do in their own case. And I realized that I need to encourage people to go start their own support groups, formal or informal, and networks of support because not only can I not be there for everybody, but I'm very bad at being there for everybody. I'm not an empathetic person. I don't like to listen to people's problems. I'm a person of action. I'm a filmmaker. I tell stories, but I'm not the shoulder to cry on. So I want to help people find resources that can help them. So Letta Bassam Branch, Armchair Psychiatry with Friends. So Letta, how's that working for you? Are people giving you good advice? Do they understand what you're going through? Or do you feel like you're just burdening them? I'm just curious. Um, and again, for people who joined late, I talked previously about the Simply Parent uh, organization. And what you can do is you can sign up on their website to become a member and start a support group in your own area. And they're all member run. So you don't need any formal training. They give you the information you need. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of highs from people like Amanda McDonald, William McKee, uh, Laura Kitt Johnson. Uh, Laura Kitt, have you joined a support group and how has that been? I'm just asking people if they can talk about the resources that are helping them and also to point people to the simplyparent.org website where you can sign up to have a uh, to start a support group. So let's see what people are saying. So Amanda McDonald said, friends and contacts online who are going through the same thing. Awesome. I'm also going to share right now our resources page. Uh, so everybody has it. So if you ever miss a live Facebook video, and I also have to admit I haven't been doing them the past two weeks because I've been busy working on the film and just scheduling-wise didn't work. Um, so if you go to the resources page, so Letta Boston Watch says, wonderful, but no, no one else has experienced this. I'm only a grandmother. Um, oh, thank you, uh, uh, Amanda, for saying that you rock. Oh, thank you. So right now, if you go to our resources page, what are you going to find? You're going to find all the past videos that we've done. Um, and you're going to find some other resources that, and this is important, these are not groups that we're affiliated with. Everything that I give, you know, all the advice that I give, um, you know, please take with a grain of salt, do your own research, feel comfortable. Um, Victor Gunter said, people who have not been through this situation don't really 
don't seem to really understand. The courts will only do something if attorney involved. Try to keep going just by keeping hope alive. Yes. So I think it's very important to find other people who, one, it's good to talk to people who aren't going through this so they understand what the problem is. And they, you might be surprised that they are going through it and they never were brave enough to volunteer that information. But it is very important to have an active support group. And for me, that has to be either a therapist, a group that you meet with who are going through similar issues. And ideally, it should be in person. The online stuff is great, but you really need to form something in your own community. And if you need help, the Simply Parent organization gives you the tools to form a support group in your own family. I've never been to a support group. I don't know how effective they are. But I'm like, okay, this is interesting because you don't have to wait for someone else to form one. And there are support groups that I know that are active in the LA area and in Fort Collins, Colorado. So what, what I think I want everyone to come away with from this chat with is the importance of having a plan, a strategy about how to keep yourself safe and healthy and not letting it be an afterthought. So Veronica, Vija Lobos says, we have started a group in our, in our town, Adrian, Michigan. Veronica, tell us more. How many people show up? How often do you meet? And was it hard to start the group? Um, so Laura Kit Johnson, I do a lot of research on my own. I don't think that your advice to humble yourself and go forward is the best. Don't hash over the past. Be a happy parent when you have time with your child. Smile with your child. That's really good advice, Laura Kit. Um, also, though, a lot of parents here don't have any contact with their children. Um, so let's about some branch. Louisiana Fathers' Rights and Americans for Equal Shared Parenting. So Letta pointed out something very good, which I think is where a lot of people get stuck when they're looking for resources. There are a lot of resources out there that are branded as gender specific, such as the Father's Rights Movement, and also if you go to many courts, there'll be like Women's Help Centers for Domestic Violence. One thing that I found is pretty much all groups accept members from both genders and are happy to do so. So I was at a courthouse filming. I was filming the, the woman who ran the domestic violence shelter, and it was called the Women's Legal Aid Action. She goes, but we gladly help men who are victims of domestic violence. Now, would it be helpful if they changed their name? Yes, but I think it's so important to ask groups that seem to be gender specific if they will accept you and you might be pleasantly surprised. I know the Father's Rights Group, for example, has a ton of women members, some of whom are um, spouses of men going through this, but a lot are mothers who can't see their kids. And they have a helpline. So if you go to the, I'm gonna publish this right now. If you go to the um, Facebook, the Father's Rights Movement page. Father's Rights Movement. So they have half a million likes showing how um, bad this is. Um, and the first thing they have is they have four numbers to call. You go to their page. And they have David, Mike, Ralph, and they even have a Ralph who specializes in military um, issues. And then they have Yael who's in um, Spanish and can talk to you by text. And I know that they will gladly talk to women who are going through this. So that's another resource right there. Um, so again, main takeaway, if you see a group that seems gender specific, ask. You might be pleasantly surprised that that is the name, but that they will happily help you even if you're not in that situation. Um, to Tanya Miller says, I'm in Pennsylvania. My three children are alienated and the worst, my two oldest, uh, okay, so to Tanya, I suggest that you look at our past videos about how to explain your story so you're able to explain this in a, in a good uh, manner. Um, Veronica has just said Parents United US is another resource to get a group started. Great. Um, Tobin, several years ago, I used to attend free national lines on mental illness family support groups that help people deal with the stress caused by dealing with the family members or former members who suffer from perceived emotional illness challenges 
in most cases, the people who were affected by other family members with personality disorder traits especially. They have locations around the nation. That is a great idea, Rick. So remember, it doesn't have to be specific about being an erased parent, being an alienated parent, or even being a divorced parent. You can find groups that are similar because sometimes you need just to vent and get it out in a healthy way. Now, this is very important because some of you have signed up for an, our ambassador program. And the ambassador program means you're gonna get training on how to bring the Erasing Family film when it comes out in 2019 to schools, to uh, bar associations, universities, police stations, and houses of worship. And to set up screenings, to bring in local speakers. So this can be the first, the film can really help inspire change in the family court. But you can't do that if you are emotionally broken. We all lead stressful lives, and if you're an erased parent, your life is even more stressful and tragic and sad, right? But it might take time, but the important thing is to never mix advocacy with therapy. So when you go talk to a politician, when you talk to the press, when you talk to um, someone important in your community about changing a law, providing more resources, you should never bring up your own case and you should never be asking for help for your own case. This seems counterintuitive, but if you are representing a movement, I suggest never even mentioning that you are an erased parent. And if asked, just say, yes, I'm one of 22 million parents in the US alone. Soon we're gonna get stats for Canada. I'm very excited to say we just helped fund a study. Um, we connected a donor with um, Jennifer Harmon, who did all the original numbers and research, and we'll have numbers for Canada, so soon we'll know how many erased parents are in Canada. But you shouldn't lead with your case when you're doing advocacy. That's why it's so important to have an active support group where you meet face-to-face -face at least once a month, you know, even just to complain and get it out. So that way you're not always burning your own friends and family with this, you're, and maybe you can get some practical tips from other people. Leslie Kreese, if you do decide to start a group, one way to find local members is via meetup.com. Meetup.com is great. I use it a lot to meet people around different interests. And there, I have seen groups for divorced and single parents. Um, no reason why you couldn't start a support group. And in the beginning, if you're just meeting to discuss how sad you are, that's okay. Because you need a place to vent, and then hopefully over time, you might get more solutions. Uh, Danny Fuel, there are no help centers for dads here. The victim's advocate said she hates LDS men. LDS men, um, that's another way to refer to Mormons, for those that don't know the term, uh, Church of Latter-day Saints. I'm so sorry to hear that, Danny. All right, I'm assuming that you're in Utah, um, or somewhere near Utah, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, there are a lot of groups in Utah. Utah is a very active state. So what we want to do with the Erasing Family when the film comes out in 2019 is to actually have a resources map so people can search by geographic uh, location or virtual location um, for places to get help. That being said, it's also great if you can start forming your own support groups because there aren't enough resources out there. So Leda Bassin says they really are gender biased and extremely helpful. The two groups focus on different things, don't know which group you're talking about. One being legislative changes and the other is personal help and guidance. That's great. So Christine Claire Catright Dove, thank you for everything you're doing. I'm dealing with this in Canada. So like I just said, Christine, we're gonna have numbers on Canada hopefully within a few months. Hi, I'm from uh, Maryland. Maryland has a very active um, national parents organization chapter that's pushing for change. Again, advocacy has to be different. So we're about 14 minutes into this live chat. So let's take a break. Um, not a commercial break, I'm staying here, but a fun break. How many of you on here have not yet liked the Erasing Family Facebook page? If you haven't, please like now. Please share this video on your own timeline right now. Please share this with any groups you're in dealing with this issue on your timeline right now. Now, the reason why I'm asking you to like the page, and you might have, one, there's lots of people who follow things and haven't actually liked it. Um, and right now we're about 19,360 likes. 
I really want to get us, us up to 20,000 likes as soon as possible because we are trying to get this film onto a major network and 20,000 likes sounds a lot better, much, a lot better than 19,000. And we are so close. So if you haven't liked our Facebook page, it takes one second. You will be able to follow us more. Please do so. So anyone on here who hasn't liked our Facebook page yet? So not so remember to like the page, not the video. And then if you haven't already, share this video on your timeline in a group. I'm going to give everybody a few seconds to do that. Um, it's it me it's such it's it's a click to share it's a click to like but it really does help um, so Lisa Lee's Forbes hi I'm here in Canada too um, Louis uh, C Fukin says hi so I want to so while everyone is liking and sharing I'm gonna say hi to Louis uh, or Louis because he messaged me today and he's one of the many parents who asked what do I do in my case I need help and I basically spent this whole chat saying that I can't be your reference. You need to find people in your area who you can reach out to and help you. You need to form your own support group. Um, one is it's illegal to give legal advice and practice law without a license, so I don't do that. But also, I just, um, and this is, sounds weird, but I'm not an empathetic person. I don't like listening to personal stories. I like turning them into movies, and I like helping people that way. I'm very clear about what type of advocacy and help I can do. That is why also you see a lot of people right here on the chat. If someone's story, um, you know, is able to seem similar or you're from a similar geographical area, reach out to each other, start talking to each other. If you can, get on the phone. Don't limit it to social media. It's much more powerful and healing to talk to someone on the phone than it is to chat. It's much more healing to talk to them in person. Sometimes we forget this. Um, Stephen Warner says, where's the movie? The movie's coming out in 2019. We're finishing it up right now. Um, if you want updates, like everything else, go to erasingfilling.org, and you can sign up for our mailing list. You can also donate to our film fund if you haven't already. You can also sign up to become an ambassador, and you'll get a training, about three hours of training on how to bring the film to your community. There's a lot to do before it comes out. Um, Veronica Villalobo says, it was not hard to start the meetings, and we met once a month and keep it the first Wednesday of every month. That is great. Thanks for sharing that. It's good. One time a month and keeping consistent. Very important. Lisa Hayden Carl, New Jersey. Lisa, you are running a support group in New Jersey, so people should contact Lisa if they're in northern New Jersey and want to join her support group. I'm putting you on the spot, Lisa. But I connected you with somebody, because that's the thing. There's all these resources out here that people don't know about. So this dad, who I've met, and like Lisa, both of them, Evan Serrano, um, and Lisa, they're associate producers of the film, so they've already done uh, you know, an amazing thing by donating to the film button at the $1,000 level. And Elvin talks, texts me, he's like, I just feel really down, it's my daughter's 16th birthday and I can't see her. Which by the way, if you want to see a child trying to reach out to a parent and to the judge, uh, go to Free Laura 2018, she's on Facebook and she's live streaming her attempts to see her dad. So. What is so? Elvin said, I need help. And I said, Dude, do you know about Lisa's support group in northern New Jersey? Because that's where he's based. He goes, No. So he had a, a, one of the best support groups in the nation, because I've heard great things about Lisa's Carlisle support group, near him, and he didn't know about it. So that's why we want to form a resources map to get these things going. Um, Amanda McDonald, any ideas on reaching out for your children when over 16? In New Zealand, one 16 courts will not act. That's the same everywhere in the world. Drinking ages in New Zealand is 18. Um, I don't know, buy them a drink when they're 18. Um, but we have a lot of videos, Amanda, on about reaching out to your kids. And there is no magic solution. I think a lot of times people, they contact me thinking that I can send them a word. And often it is just being there constantly, sending positive messages, not saying that you miss that you miss them, 
not getting sad about it, but just asking how they're doing, keeping it focused on them, and realizing that any hateful messages they send to you, they're just programmed to stay and they're trying to protect themselves. So, and not taking it personally, and just like you don't take it personally when an addict does heroin, you say they have an addiction, they have a problem. Um, we have done a lot of other videos, which again, you can see on our resources page on Erasing Family. Um, so Lisa Hayden Carlisle, we meet in Westfield, exit 135, second Tuesday of the month, 16 Prospect Bar and Grill. Awesome. Um, Natalie Woodward, I want to help behind the scenes. So Rick Tobin said, could your ambassador or criminal leader involve into various erasing family support groups in person or online around the nation? No, I am not running support groups. Why? Because there are so many other great people who are running support groups. Like Simply Parent has a training organization, um, has training on this. Uh, you can start your own on Meetup. And I feel like I would, what a racing family would be doing is replicating something that already exists there. The idea is to find the support that's already there. What is not there is, one, a documentary that explains how children are suffering from this, which is what we're making. A book for child, adult children and young adult children of divorce. I know, shouldn't that exist? Shouldn't there be a ton on Amazon being that half of the children go through this? I couldn't find any. If you can prove me wrong, please prove me wrong. So we're going to be writing a self-help book to help kids reunite. We're going to keep it very short, and it's not going to be called How to Reunite with Your Race Parents because they won't read it. It's a self-help book about how to overcome your parents' divorce. We are also going to be creating press trainings because I feel that people need a lot of help on messaging, marketing, strategy, how to run a successful protest or action. Um, people are really struggling, and the messaging isn't effective. So that's where we're focusing on is on general messaging and outreach to the children themselves. I think that there needs to be more support groups out there, but there are already so many, it's about finding and connecting them. And that's why we want to create a map so people can find these resources. Um, so another place where you get resources, which is going to seem counterintuitive, but you might be pleasantly surprised at the local courthouse. This varies a lot by different courthouses, but sometimes there are free parenting classes, workshops, uh, hotlines on how to get legal representation, support groups all in the courthouse. Now, some of you might be in a courthouse that doesn't have any of those things, but it's always worth asking. Um, you might be walking by a free legal aid society in your courthouse. And it's very easy to say there's no help out there, and that may be the case. And one thing that we talk about in the film is the lack of resources, but it never hurts to ask. So again, little break. If you haven't already, share this video on your wall. Share it on a group that deals with this issue. If you haven't already, like the Erasing Family page. So, uh, Tara Kleeman, definitely need help on messaging. Thank you. Yes. So, we already did a few videos on how to tell your story, how to talk to the press, but we will be launching in the fall a press training program where people who want to can be trained on how to be public advocates. The first step is to become an ambassador for the film and set up screenings because the first thing when you sign to be an ambassador that we do isn't to tell you about how to set up a screening is to tell you about how to effectively message and to give you examples of what works and what doesn't. So it's the first step on how to be how to take this public. Lisa Hayden Carlisle, I was thinking about a book, a list, 20 things not to say, text or email to your alienated kid. Very good idea. This would be a great meeting topic. Uh, Shannon Ryan Connor said a map of support groups is a great idea. Thank you. Yes, and to do that, we need to know where these support groups are. Um, so Mom's House, Dad House is a book for kids about how to navigate having two homes. That alienation but a nice resource for kids in divorce. There's a penny and parent version. Yes, I know that, but would you give it to an 18-year-old? What I'm saying is what book could you give to a 16-year-old or an 18-year-old or a 25-year-old who has gone through this? Or even a 12-year-old? Because a lot of the books that are out there, there's a ton of books for little kids, but there's not anything for teens. 
So that's why the book that we're writing and working on right now will be focused on, we might have to write two because I found out today that there are two different demographics, but like, you know, um, high school, college, and then after college, for example. Um, giving them some very practical advice can be super short and super simple about how to reunite with their race parent. A minute back on. In New Zealand, there's a group called Backbone Collection that doesn't believe in uh, parental alienation syndrome is active to get court change. They're saying fathers in particular are using uh, parental alienation syndrome to abuse kids under their care so they don't have to pay child support. Uh, they see them further using parental alienation syndrome as a way to abuse mothers for others. I'm sorry to hear that. So first of all, let's get our terms straight. There is no such thing as parental alienation syndrome. It doesn't exist. There might be something called parental alienation. And a great way to sidestep this debate is you, Amanda, as an erased mom, I'm going to say you are being called by the higher power, by the universe, however you want to call it, to be an active group in Backbone Collective, to be an active member of Backbone Collective, and to bring up evidence to the contrary, to ask them to watch Erasing Family when it comes out. Because, and this is very important, it's not about are there claims of abuse or not that are true. Claims of abuse should be investigated. Claims, and if there are claims of abuse that are proven to be true, that parent should not enjoy unlimited access to their child. And if we say what we are talking about are fit and loving parents who are being erased from their lives, if you're not fit, I am not talking about you in the film. If you are not fit and loving, you shouldn't have equal access to your child. So right there in the definition, we outrule what they're saying. They're saying, yes, if you are abusive, you should not see your kids unlimited. You should have supervised access, and there should be a plan to get you to the place where you can see your kids. Maybe you won't be able to complete that plan, but there should be a plan because it's not about removing a parent from the kid's life forever. That makes people get more violent, make them more depressed. They might go form another family and do the same thing all over again. So we want to prevent that, right? We want all children to have healthy relationships with both parents. Some parents need a lot more supervision and help than others. But if they are fit and loving, then parental alienation cannot exist because parental alienation, the definition of it, or being a race parent, is what happens when you are loving and fit and you are denied the right to form a relationship with your kid, either because they've been brainwashed against you or you are prevented from seeing them. So by saying that that's what it is, what we're talking about is unfounded claims. And what we show in the film is that when they, we ask the kids, what were you told about your parents? They say nothing. It's just so stressful to see them. And what we talk about is that when the kids can't make a, a say something specific, I don't want to see mom, why? I don't like her, why? She annoys me, why? She's always calling me. It's called being a parent, dude, right? So right there, that's a case of, of being a raised parent, or as some people call it, alienation. And if you hit your kid and the kid says, I don't want to see you because you hit me, that's not alienation. That's a kid reacting to being abused. Completely different topics. Um, and what we do know from the research is that kids who are abused are much more ambivalent. They often say, I love my mom. I wish she would stop hitting me. I love my dad. I wish he would stop yelling at me. They want help. So when someone says, I hate my mom, I never want to see her again, why? Just because, I don't know. Um, so Tara Clearman McGill, anyone know of any groups in Portland, Oregon? Uh, I know of a group called, it's going to come to me, but I think they do more advocacy. But uh, Tara, maybe you can start one with Meetup or with Simply Parent. I think that's that could be a very good uh, thing to start. And I'm sure in a city like Portland, you unfortunately will find many people in the same situation. So Amanda, I hear that, but I think judges finding this hard to manage. Thank you for your comments. It, it, it is hard, and you might not feel in that place, but start going there and start bringing up your story and saying, like, you know, we, I would say, look, you are about protecting victims of domestic violence. We, I am too, and we just want to say that brainwashing a child is another form of child abuse. It's, it's just as bad, and it needs to stop, but we're not minimizing that abuse happens or that it should be swept under the rug. That's not what this is about. And 
many victims of domestic violence are then denied access to their children. So I see the domestic violence camp as natural allies. And at the Simply Parent Conference, they had a discussion on when they brought in a domestic violence advocate, a shared parenting advocate, a child support reform advocate, and someone else who was on healthcare reform. And what's very interesting is that the person who was suffering domestic violence who was against shared parenting in a way, she herself was an alienated parent and said it was far worse than being hit because you can get over that, but not being able to see your children is torture. So there are conversations to be had, and I think of something so important is that it needs to start as a conversation, not as a list of demands go and listen, go work with these organizations, and then invite them to have a showing of the film and say they can debate it afterwards. They can say how much they disagree with it afterwards. But it's just a movie. Um, Shadow Marine Collar, anyone know of a group in Long Island, New York? Uh, Alan John Parker, my kids are being trained to, to lie about me. You and 22 million, John. Um, Wayne Todd, hello, anyone in Portland, PM me? Um, okay. Lewis says, uh, hello everyone. So Lewis, because you specifically emailed me with a page long email about your case. Who is your local support group, Lewis? And if you don't have one, where do you think you will go look for one? I'm talking to you, Lewis, because you said for me to talk to you specifically on this chat. Well, you mean, FYI, I just learned of this paper today. I've not read it yet. Uh, Turn New Jersey written paper and print alienation overview of the case law pertaining to it. Here's the link. Thank you, William. That is an awesome resource. I'm still waiting for Lewis's reply. I'm not doing this to put you on the stop, but just to encourage everyone here to walk away today with the plan on how you are going to get help in your area. If that means you need to start a support group, start it. It could be once a month to start. I'm sure if anything else, you will be surprised how many people show up. Go to the simplyparent.org website and look for how to set up a group there. They're also on our resources page at erasingfamily.org. And you can also use places like Meetups to advertise this, Facebook. Uh, so I think there's a lot there. So another commercial break. If you haven't already shared this video on your Facebook page, share it in groups that are working on this issue on Facebook. And if you haven't yet, like our Facebook page group, we're trying to get up to 20,000 likes. Encourage other people to do so. It's a simple way to support what we're doing and to help get more interest in the film from potential networks. So Louis C. Fugut, I really don't know if we have such support. Uh, Michael McKean, hi from Ireland, great work you guys. So Louis, where are you located? What area are you in of the country? Just type it out. So Lewis, we need to find you a support group. So once you tell me what area you're in, we'll see if anyone can help you. Maybe there's someone on this group who can help you right now. And if not, we will, we will, I will not end the call until you find someone who you can talk to, Lewis. Um, I've spoken with the past founder, don't know who that is. Um, so Lewis, where are you located in the country? Because we are finding, so everybody, we're going to help, we're going to crowdsource Lewis support. Annapolis, Maryland. Okay, Lewis, I'm going to put you in touch with someone who uh, lives in your city who has a support group. Or it's an advocacy group, but it's, it's, I will put you in touch with somebody who you can talk to, who's two people, actually, who contacted me today, who can talk to you. And if they don't have a support group, maybe they can point you in the direction or to find one. So there you go. Um, Mary Blodges, anyone from St. Louis? Wayne Todd, you ruled Junior. Yes, thank you. And I'll be messaging you later, Wayne Todd, about finishing the animation for the film, because we're almost there. Um, so this is a great way of how you can get involved, because a lot of people say, you know, and I completely understand this, I'm tapped out financially, can't donate. So Wayne is a talented artist, and he is helping us by creating the animation slides for the film. Um, if you want to get involved in another way, so I'm just going to put this up here again. So if you need resources, here are the resources on our website. And if you're like, OK, uh, you know, you can watch all the fast videos. But now if you're like, OK, I need you to um, uh, I like, I want to help. I want to get involved. You can do that now, because we have a great Get Involved page. 
And what you can do is you can sign up to be a volunteer. You can sign up to be, if you volunteer, please be as specific as possible with what your skill set is and what your time commitment is. Saying I can do everything is the same as saying I can do nothing. So it's much more better to say I can help write Facebook posts. Great, we need that. I'm a graphic designer. We so need that. I'm a paralegal. We need help doing background research on the people on the film just to make sure that they don't have a criminal record we don't know about. Paralegal would be helpful. Um, you know, someone said, I'm an accountant. I'm like, we need an accountant. Can you donate two hours of your time a month to help us manage our books? Yes, great. Specific, the better, you know. I can write grants. Okay, have you won a grant? Tell us. You can also sign up to be an ambassador and you'll get training to bring this film to your community. Okay. So Sean and Farrow, uh, I hope you interview politicians here in the US soon. We need help. I'm in Texas. So Sean, we, Sean. So another thing, if you are asking what's going on with the film, racingplay.org sign up for our email list and you will get updates almost like once a week now about the progress of the film. Um, Amanda McDonald said, hi, talk to me. I've semi-started an online group by two contacts, one in Australia and one in South Island. Great. Uh, Flo, Portland, Maine. Um, children need the support from all of us. Yes, and we're going to start a children-focused support group. Uh, Victor Gunder, I will take the challenge to start a support group. I'm looking in, I'm going to ruin this name, sorry. Pocatello, Idaho. We'll find a location to meet at a time. I'll get the message out on Facebook as much as possible. When I do, I'll let you know. Thank you, Victor. And again, use meetup.com. Um, connect with Simply Parent. Maybe they can help. Um, Amanda McDonald, I'm an accountant. Yes, but you're in New Zealand, and I need an American accountant, unfortunately. Um, Victor, follow the Father's Rights Movement for your state. Joe Polisi, thank you, Ginger. Oh, thank you. So, so we've had one person going to start a support group. Lots of people finding out about more resources around their area. So, I want to do a quick recap. So, uh, just to give some. Sh to give some basic information. Erasingplay.org, you can sign up for our newsletter so you get updates about the status of the film. You can go to our resources page to watch this video and all the other videos that we've done and see all the resources that we've been talking about. Uh, you can sign up to be a volunteer, be an ambassador to bring the film on your community, to your community, the Get Involved page. You can even download and print our snazzy brochures to hand out. And, um, and if you want to, if you're like, I want this to keep going, I want to support you guys, you can make a tax-deductible donation to our film fund and to our impact campaign, because we're going to be doing a lot more after the film comes out in 2019. So don't mix your advocacy with your therapy. Don't talk about your personal case, you know, and go on and seek help when you're at, like, a press conference or something. Find a support group in your area because face-to-face -face support with a therapist or a group of people going through a similar situation is very important. Uh, as Rick Tobin pointed out, you can go and look for groups that deal with support groups for family members of people with mental illness. It doesn't have to be something specific, just a place where you can talk to and do group therapy is so important. Next, check your local courthouse. It's a place a lot of you don't want to go, but sometimes you are you will be surprised that in the courthouse they will offer classes, workshops, free legal aid advice sessions. Um, just ask. You might be surprised. You might not. There might be no resources. It's worth five minutes. Other takeaway, contact groups, even if they say they're talking about a gender that's not your own, a lot of the groups that seem gender specific, like the Father's Rights page, actually aren't. Um, and some domestic violence groups are called like Women's Legal Aid Society will take on cases from fathers. It's always worth asking. Um, so Joe Polisi, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Joe, Linda Carlisle just talked about her group that meets uh, once a month in New Jersey. Scroll up to find the actual location. Um, Janet Neeran, I'd love to be an ambassador in Portland, Oregon. Fill out the form, Janet, and start and start the training. Uh, William McGee, I just published a new novel about custody, abduction, parental alienation, called Half the Child. Um, Daisy Marie William, that is awesome. I'll check it out. So any questions before we sign off for today? This has been a great chat. Remember, you need to take care of yourself um, so you're healthy. So when you do reconnect with your child, you are in a great place and they want 
to see you because you are healthy and you're loving and you can bring something to their lives. So it's not about suffering for them, it's about being healthy and happy for your children. And to do that, you need support. I can't be your support. There's only one of me and there's 22 million of you in the US alone. I can't do it. But 22 million people together can provide each other support. We'll be creating a map for 2019 of local resources in your area. But for right now, if you don't have a local support group, first of all, Google search it. You might be surprised what shows up. Like all these people don't know about Lisa's wonderful support group who live in New Jersey. Look for online for local uh, Facebook groups that are, that are related to your area. You also might be surprised and ask for support groups there. Um, and then start one. Simplyparent.org has the resources for you to start a group in your area. Um, you can also use Meetup to find other like-minded parents. Start small once a month, I think, is more than enough. And you can build from there. So Amanda McDowell just said, would Dr. Phil do a program on this? He has done many. Uh, Flo Hanfar, do you support faith-based groups? Uh, I mean, I'm open to anybody who, who does this. Um, I'm not of a particular faith. Um, Daisy Marie, so how do I apply? Go to erasingplan.org and click on Get Involved, and you will fill out the form uh, to become an ambassador. So Flo said, I'm really just trying to uh, a faith-based group, Lisa Car Car Hyde and Carlisle, did you reference a guideline for support groups in general or what one for us might look like? Uh, no, I'm, I'm saying that we at A Racing Family don't want to run support groups because there's already so many people out there doing that. It's We want to connect people with the resources that are already out there and our mission will be on providing support groups uh, for children, our text line, books, information, and general education press trainings, because that's where we can fill a role that's not being filled right now. Um, so we are not starting support groups. So Daisy Marie, no support here in my town. Daisy Marie, where do you live? You say, my town, how can we help if you don't know? Um, I filled it out and haven't heard back. So Flo, did you fill out the ambassador form? Did you get an email telling you what the next steps are? Um, because you should have. I'm not sure when you filled it out, but um, you should get one immediately. And if you haven't, send an email to info at erasingfamily.org saying that you haven't. By the way, there are a few people who filled out the uh, ambassador form with an email address that isn't correct. And the first thing that we're checking for is attention to detail. So you might have been one of those people, maybe not. Um, let's see. Uh, Flo Harden Ford, ambassador, okay. Uh, so Flo. I will, can you private message, can you uh, send me your email um, when we get off this chat and I will see what happened with it. But you should have. Also go maybe look in your spam folder, it might be going there. Daisy Marie, wow, just hearing you say my name makes you feel this and not alone. Get support. If there's 22 million parents in the US alone, that means in your town there's at least one other person going through this. Find each other. Put up a flyer in the courthouse. That's a great way to find people. Hand out flyers to the courthouse. Can't see your kids? Support group. You know, that's another one. Thank you so much uh, for, uh, for, for being here. Remember, find support, spread the word, like our page, share this information with others. And on our website, you, under resources, you can find all of this information. And you can also sign up to be an ambassador or volunteer on our Get Involved page. And if you can, donate to our film fund so we can finish this film and keep on going. Thanks, bye.